So today is going to be the first day where I shoot, or at least plan to shoot, a full roll of film. Um, I would have preferred it to be to have been a little bit nicer. It's quite cloudy, overcast. There is a little bit of light going on. Um, I would have preferred to shoot Portra 400 that I got, but I think it's probably better to try the black and white today. Um, I have a roll of Fomapan 400, which I have heard good things about from a few film photographers that I watch. So, yeah. Let's load it up and I'll go out and see what I can get. Hopefully I can get some shots that turn out because this is only my second roll of film, but I'm looking forward to it. So my plan with this one was to try and create a nice set of photos from the park and dam area. It is actually quite a large area so I did end up coming back a few different days and luckily enough one of the days there was quite a bit of snow on the mountains which was kind of cool. I don't think I had seen the photos from my very first roll of film um, at this point. Could be wrong but I don't think I did. So there were a few mistakes that I made in the first roll that I kind of made again with this one, but I definitely learned quite a bit too. I think I got off to a good start with that first photo, and it was just a nice few days walking around the dam, sort of trying to find compositions and stuff, and lucky for me it didn't rain too much, which was nice. <laughs> So with this shot I was going for quite a sort of simple minimal composition. I wanted the picnic bench to be in the lower left corner. Then we had the line of trees and the mountain behind it. I focused on the picnic bench and exposed for the darker parts of the shadows below where the trees are and I think it turned out pretty well. It's one of those quite minimal shots that I like and I think these just work really well with medium format. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. So the last photo turned out quite nice, this one not so much. It looked like quite a nice composition through the ground glass and the light was shining on the bench and the little rock beside it, almost like a spotlight through the trees. I was kind of concentrating more on the path leading up to the bench and the way the light was hitting the bench that I didn't really take into consideration how dark both the left and right side of the frames were. And the fact that the sky in the top right corner was so bright meant the dynamic range was probably stretched a bit too far. I was actually able to recover most of the highlights, but the darker parts on the left and right of the frame where the trees and stuff are is just a little bit muddy looking and there's not really a lot of detail there. 
but I'm glad I took it anyway. I definitely learned from this one and I just need to pay a bit more attention to the entire frame. I mean, I do still kind of like it, even if the exposure is a little bit messy. These three photos were took pretty much from the same spot overlooking the lower dam. The first one I quite like, the light was just hitting the edge of the little round building which was above the overflow and we have the mountains in the background. I do think the sky in the top left corner is a little bit distracting just because of how bright it was compared to the rest of the scene. It probably wasn't the ideal time for the shot if the sun hadn't have moved around just as far it probably would have worked out a little bit better. The other two shots are nothing special really, the view directly down the dam is pretty epic in person but it's so far away that the photo doesn't really do the scene justice but I thought it looked too nice to not try and get a shot in some way or other. I do like though how the mountains on each side add some contrast and draw your attention to the water and the mountain in the distance. The shot of the mountain which was on my left over the dam wall is very simple. I wish there had been a bit of snow on the peak which would have added some interest and also some contrast too. It's nothing special but I think it kind of works as part of a set from this area. So first composition of the day, um, just walking up this little path, seeing the mountain is right between these two trees, which is kind of cool. We also have like um, the hill that leads up to the actual dam itself. And we have a little stump in the foreground with some snow on it. Fortunately, there isn't too much snow on top of the mountain, which is a little bit annoying because it's kind of why I came out today. Um, <laughs> hoping to get a lot of snowy peaks, but let's see what I'm gonna be shooting. I am rating the Foma Pan at 200 speed just because I feel like overexposing it by one stop might get better results from what I've seen, but I guess we will wait and see. Okay, so this was one of the shots where I was really looking forward to seeing the end result. I liked how the trees on each side were framing the scene. 
we had the tree stump in the lower part of the frame with a little bit of snow on it which was cool and we had one of the buildings which I assume is used to control the dam in some way or other. And finally we had the mountain in the centre which is kind of the main subject of this photo. Again a little bit of snow on the top of the mountain would have been nice but what can you do? Unfortunately this one didn't turn out as I wanted it, it's another part of the learning process because nothing in the image is actually in focus. I believe I had the focus knob turned the whole way to infinity as far as it goes and through the ground glass the mountain looked in focus to me but I remember with the first roll of film the shots I took where I focused to infinity I had the same results, I don't think any of them were fully in focus. I'm not actually sure what the problem is, I'm not sure whether when I focus to infinity what I'm seeing through the ground glass is a little bit off with the actual taking lens or whether it's a combination of that and I'm not shooting a high enough aperture to have the whole scene in focus. I think in future though I'll shoot scenes like this no lower than f8 so if I miss focus by a little bit pretty much everything should still be in focus anyway. And I think instead of just focusing to infinity I'll probably pick something a little bit closer than that and use a higher aperture. Well at least that's what I'll try and see what sort of results I can get. So this shot was actually took on I believe it was the second day and the mountains in the background had some snow on them this time and the light was really nice as well so I took this shot pretty much of the same scene that I had took on the previous day but from a different angle because I wanted to make sure that the mountains in the background were in the frame. The framing I think could have definitely been a bit better with this one but I did expose it correctly and it is in focus and I definitely think the mountains in the distance add something else to the shot. So yeah, not bad. So as I was walking along the path to the upper dam I seen this little bench and I just knew as soon as I seen it that I wanted to take a photo of it. The two photos I got of the bench are probably two of my favourites from the road. The first shot I got a little bit closer and had the bench fill more of the frame. I then had the mountain in the background which I sort of lined up behind the bench. I think the 80mm lens really worked nicely for this one because it made the mountain look even bigger which gives it a more dramatic look. The second shot I wanted to get more in frame so I moved a little bit further back and included some of the path in the foreground as well as the mountains with the snowy peaks in the distance. The clouds in the distance that were hovering over the snowy mountain top definitely give the whole scene a little bit of a moodier feel which I quite like. I'm not sure what aperture I shot these in, I think it was 5.6 
but if I was doing it again I would probably increase that to make sure that the entire bench was in focus in the first shot and just a little bit more of the scene was sharper in the second shot. But I do really like how both of them turned out. Alright, so I've made my way up to the top dam, which, as you can see, is pretty epic looking. The one problem I'm having is this right here. I don't know if you can see the shadow of the tripod and the shadow of me. So uh, when I'm trying to take that photo, yes, the dam is nicely lit, but my shadow is also on the road here. So I think what the plan is, is to either wait until the sun goes down a little bit that it isn't creating a shadow with me and just hitting the dam, or I walk up, take a photo of the dam and then come back and take this photo because the leading line is just, it's too hard not to want to take this photo. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a waiting game. that light is much better although I kind of do want to do this handheld and that means I'm gonna to have to go for 5.6 at 125th I believe that probably is gonna be quite shallow but for trial sake just to see what foam pans like either exposed as it should be or maybe slightly underexposed in the foreground I'll try 5.6 at 125th uh, 5.6, 125th. Boom. So it's probably hard to notice on YouTube, but unfortunately this photo suffers from the same problem as the other shot where I mentioned about infinity focus. Nothing in the shot looks in focus. I probably should have used a tripod for this one and a higher aperture, but I did focus to infinity again, I believe. But yeah, just a learning process and I'll change things next time and hopefully that works out. Okay, so dealing with the absolute last little bits of light here and I think for this one, um, because the dam isn't really lit up anymore, that I might try sort of a silhouette type shot. So unfortunately we don't have any water coming through which would have added a nice bit of contrast, but where the water's supposed to be coming through you can just clearly see the sky. So I might try something kind of a little bit abstractly, very minimal, where the dam is almost a silhouette and you just have the two gaps where you can see the sky. Um, yeah, final shot of the roll. A little experimental one, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Definitely gonna need the tripod for this one. Okay, so I believe a 5.6 at one second should work. I am going to use a little timer for this one, so a 5.6, one second. No idea how that's really going to look, but that is the final shot of the row.
I had no idea at the time whether this shot would work as I had in my head. And after seeing it a few times, I actually really like it. It is what I was going for. There's actually more detail in the shadows than I had thought, but it still has that silhouette look to it. I just wish there had been some water flowing down the front of the dam because it would have been bright white in the shot. It would have added some nice contrast and definitely a lot more interest. But I guess that is a good excuse to go back and take this shot again. Either way though, I do still really like how it turned out. And that is where this one finished. I ended up having quite a long walk back in the dark with all the camera gear, which was fun. But um, yeah, quite a nice few days of shooting with the film camera. I'm generally quite happy with all the results, or at least most of them. I had seen some other photographers here on YouTube use Fomapan. I know Kyle McDougall is a big fan of it. I really like the results he got, the contrast and the grain and stuff that the Fomapan give. And I was hoping that that would work kind of well for these shots. And I think it worked pretty nicely. It gives the photos a really old film look. I know film in general sort of obviously gives you that nostalgic feel looking at it. But then there's like that older look again that a lot of people edit onto their photos I think. And there's Instagram filters and stuff for it. But I think with the foam pan and these shots that I took, it really has that very old film look. Um, I don't really know how to explain it any more than that, but I really like how it turned out. And yeah, kind of cool. The dam and all the buildings in the area were built a, quite a long time ago. So I think it almost feels like that was photos that could have been took at the time. And I, I just think there's something kind of cool about that. It's hard to pick a favourite photo from the roll. Um, there is a few that I like, as I mentioned in the video. I like the two of the bench um, along the path. Just the kind of shots I like. And like I said, I think they work really well in medium format. And yeah, I don't know. I like, I like how those turned out. I also like the one of the picnic bench with the line of trees and the little mountain behind them. I, I think that was the second shot. If I could change one thing about that shot, it would be the height of the mountain. If the mountain had been peeking up a little bit more above those trees, I think the frame would have just worked very nicely. But I do like how that one turned out. And I do really like the last shot, the silhouette type shot of the dam. It's definitely growing on me. And every time I look at it, I'm like, I, I think I like that even more than I did last time. Um, at the start when I seen it, I, I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it worked out how I wanted it to. But um, yeah, I really like how that one turned out. Very simple, but it is what I was going for and I exposed it as well as I could, I think. I did learn quite a bit during the process of making this video and obviously when I got to look at the scans. So the thing with the infinity focus and also um, what aperture to shoot. Uh, I think I'll be shooting a higher aperture for definitely all landscape type scenes from now on. I think with medium format it's so shallow that um, you can end up with a lot of it out of focus or missing focus completely like I did. Um, but it's all a learning process. Like I said it's only my second roll of film. I have already shot my third roll, like I said in the previous video, we done a trip to Donegal and that will be coming up in probably a few videos time. I have not got the scans back from that, but I had seen the first roll of film before I done that one. So hopefully I'll have made some more improvements with that roll. But anyway, that is pretty much it for this one. Hope you enjoyed watching. Um, as I mentioned in the last few videos, if you want to join the Discord, the link is in the description just to chat about photography and cameras and all that stuff. We also do want to do a live stream in the next within the next week or so, I think. And we do need some photos from you guys. We would like to just check out your photos in a live stream, have a cup of tea, chill, chat with all you guys and look at some photos. So if you want to join the Discord and share some of your photos in the photography section, that would be great. Look forward to seeing them and just chatting with whoever joins. If you enjoyed this one though, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps the video out. And maybe consider subscribing if you want to see more like this one. I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, as we always say, take it easy. Don't be a stranger. Christina was going to be in this one, but she got a shower and she says her hair is all wet and stuff. Um, but I do believe she has made dinner. So yeah, I'm going to go and eat dinner. See you.